Uh, hey guys, so today we have here the Keychron Q10. Now, the Q10 version is made out of aluminum. If you get the Keychron V10, the case will be made out of plastic. So the V10 is cheaper than the Q10. And funny thing is, the moment I bought the Q10, Keychron immediately releases the V10 version. If I had just waited a little bit longer, I would have gotten the V10 instead of the Q10. Because I like the more plastic sound of the case rather than the aluminum sound because the aluminum sound it's usually very pingy and there's it's not the acoustic I really want to have but here we are we have the Q10 it's fully aluminum it's really big it's really heavy even the mailman who gave me this box said it was heavy weighing at about 2 kilograms. Now usually I don't buy from Keychron because a lot of Keychron keyboards they usually uh, they don't allow you to mod their keyboards. When you buy a Keychron keyboard they already built everything for you and plus their keycaps are really boring and so it feels more like they are just copying and pasting everything but just in a different format right but this is a special case no one has ever done this layout before it's a 75 percent double gasket mount of course there's a lot of gasket mount keyboards nowadays but what makes this one special is that there is a knob on the left side and there are five macro keys on the left side as well and also Keychron can use Wea and Kiyomike that's probably the biggest selling point because Akko couldn't do that and also in the Q10 series, you also have the function row, unlike the Q8 where you don't have the function row. So I think having more buttons is more appealing to me. I tried using the Fancy Tech Alice 68 before, and that one was good as well, but it was missing the B button. Oh, and I offer this one. This layout has two B buttons, right, on the left side and on the right side. But for the Fancy Tech Alice, they didn't have the B button on the right side. Now, when I type normally, I don't use the B button on the right side anyway. But it just felt like something was missing, you know. So the Q10 has every button. Well, not exactly every button, but has it feels full it feels complete now it all depends on preference on what kind of sound preferences or plate you want to use but the Keychron Q10 and the V10 both comes with a steel plate and they do not provide any case foam or the PCB foam and so that will be a huge issue for me because I prefer the more dampened sound that doesn't happen when you buy an Akko board and when you buy an, the Akko board right they already provide you with a polycarbonate plate and the aluminum plate and they also give you all the foam you need to put inside your keyboard but in this case Keychron uh, left it out and they didn't 
it's actually an add-on you can buy on their website. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm buying the case foam for $10 and then I'm buying the polycarbonate plate for $17 because that's my sound preferences. Of course, you don't need to buy it. You can just use it as it is. But seriously, steel plate on metal case is just not my sound. And overall, it will be very pingy. It will be very unpleasant. And the stabilizers, oh, the stabilizers. I'll talk about that. And I hear you saying, oh, just take it out and balance the wires. Put some grease on the wires, oil up the housing. But no, the Keychron stock stabilizers, or heck, even the modded Keychron stabilizers, no matter how much I tune the stabilizers, they just sound absolutely awful. And that's because the material feels cheap. The inner housing of the stabilizer is smaller than the outer housing. And so it's really, really loose. And so no matter how much you put grease or lube or anything, it will always be really rattly. And it will also be unpleasant to type on. It feels like I am typing on sandpaper because of all the wobbling that is going on. And it sounds awful. It sounds inconsistent. And oftentimes when I press the button, there will be a huge ticking noise from the wires rattling inside the small housing. And so all of the Keychron Q10s I've seen online People replace these stock stabilizers because it sucks so much. So my advice to you, just toss it out, buy a new screw-in stabilizers, and just forget about the Keychron stock screw-in stabilizers. I don't think you can use plate mount stabilizers, so hopefully you can find some good screw-in stabilizers. Another complaint about the Keychron Q10 is, as I said earlier, right, the Keychron series are usually already complete, so there's not a lot of room to mod the keyboard. The fun thing about this hobby is modding your keyboard. So, I know that some people don't want to spend hours and hours modding their keyboard, but those people are boring. Modding is fun. And so inside the Keychron case, there's not a lot of space left for you to do anything and everything is pretty much complete. The only thing I can do here is to do the force break mod by putting masking tape around near the screw holes on the case so that it doesn't have a metal on metal contact. I suggest that you do the force break mod on every aluminum keyboards you have. And also, people say that you can put a little bit of polyfill inside the case to make it sound less hollow. But personally, I don't trust polyfill. It feels like those things can get on fire really easily. And it also gets tangled inside the keyboard causing a lot of mess okay so let's talk about the build i am doing today so i'm using the Texi purple panda they're well known for their long pole stem so imagine that a steel plate a metal case and a long pole stem it sounds absolutely clacky and loud and also i am using the Daisa PVT Ninja Keycaps I'm transferring from my Akko Mod 007 SV2 Now as you can see when they when Keychron say that their case is purple It's really really dark purple Compared to Akko's very peri color. It's like night and day 
and that really upsets me. I thought it was going to be like a bright purple, but oh, you know, a lot of people have different lightings in their room. Some people take their pictures during the day, some people take their pictures during the night. So you can't really tell what color you are going to get. But as you can see here, I am doing this in daytime where there is a lot of light and the keyboard still looks like looks really dark. It almost looks like it's black, right? But it's actually a really really dark purple. Now tell me what keycap am I going to use to fit this keyboard? You might say, oh, just use a white on black keycaps. And yes, that might work, but white on black works on every keyboard. I'm talking about this specific dark purple keyboard. Right? What am I gonna use? If you know any good looking keycaps, feel free to comment down in the section below because I have no idea. I've been looking at AliExpress, I've been looking at Shopee, I've been Google researching everywhere for any keycaps that would look good with this dark, dark purple case. But I just don't, I can't find any matches. And also I changed the screw in stabilizers to be the Fancy Alice one instead and it did improve a bit, but overall it still feels really gross because there's no PCB foam Oh, I also should mention that they have a tape mod, but the tape is really stiff So I suggest that you remove that and use your own masking tape instead for a better sound Oh, and the last tip I have is that I got this entire thing brand new from Shopee from a vendor that sold it for $182. So you can save a little bit of money if you can find the vendors in your areas that are selling these keyboard. And also you won't have to pay for keyprons shipping fee as well if it's in your region already originally i wanted the black keychron case but the vendor said that they are out of stock and suggested that i try the purple one instead so i thought it was going to be a fun bright vibrant color purple but no really really dark purple so now I'm really disappointed, but apparently the purple version is rare and hard to find. I don't know. I still prefer the black one.
Ah, okay, so what's my final wording? I would not recommend you to buy the Q10. I would probably suggest you buy the V10 instead because it is cheaper. I only got this because of the unique layout and because it is QMK and we are compatible. But the board itself is not really that good. It's not good. There are a lot of problems. It doesn't feel good to type on. You need to buy accessories from their website. So you lose even more money. Uh, so thank you for watching and I hope this video has provided you with some information and whether or not you should buy the Keychron Q10 or not. And let me just tell you that I will probably not be buying any more Keychron keyboards because it sucks. Alright, thank you for watching. Goodbye.